Hi folks, I'm here at Hinkley C, which is the great uh, nuclear reactor that we are building here in Somerset. It's the biggest engineering project in Europe. It's a project the British government may have decided is simply too big to be allowed to fail. Hinkley Point C is officially the world's most expensive nuclear project, estimated at $58 billion. This is more than three times the money UK spent on the 2012 London Olympics. When completed, it will supply 7% of the nation's electricity, freeing them from relying on Russian oil and gas or any other imported fuel. But there's a catch. Besides the absurd price tag, the project keeps on delaying. The first deadline being 2027 got pushed to 2029, which got further pushed to 2031. And that still doesn't guarantee whether Hickley will be fully operational by that time. But to be fair, delays in projects as big as this are usual. The main challenge, however, is to keep investors on board. So who exactly is funding UK energy independence? Well, for now, it's China and France, and at any given time, they can halt their funding. Oh, sorry, one of them already did. So how can the UK make such a bad deal? After the end of World War II, the UK lost its charm as this colossal empire. They may have lost their power, but didn't want to give up on innovation yet. Nuclear power became the most in thing in the 1960s and 70s, being marketed as a clean source of energy. Until now, the word nuclear brought violent flashbacks from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but this was the first time that nuclear energy was harnessed for purely commercial purposes. In fact, it was UK who created the world's first commercial nuclear reactor, Calder Hall 1. By the late 1980s, Britain had erected almost 30 nuclear units without thinking about what they would do with it past the expiry date. New reactors were too expensive to build and the old ones too. Expensive to decommission. The only viable option was to privatize the existing nuclear plants and invest in other renewables. By 2003, there was still no chance of building any new nuclear stations, including Hinkley. But that all changed in 2007 when Gordon Brown assumed the reins of the country. Suddenly, the high cost and risk associated with the project were sidelined. The electricity generated will be reliable and low carbon, and so completely compatible with our climate change obligations. Hinkley, with her sister nuclear project Sizewell C, was envisioned to provide 13% of the UK's electricity by the early 2020s. Politicians argued that the investment is worth it, as it will save the UK from the rising costs of imported oil and gas and I hope everybody who works here has, of delivering a project which will power the UK for decades to come. And I want everybody um, working here to have that sense of pride. We cannot allow our country to be dependent on Russian oil and gas. We can't allow the world to be dependent on Russian oil and gas. That's why we're undoing some of the mistakes of the past. Given that the UK and Russia don't see eye to eye after the Ukraine war, the trade relations between the countries have soared. The UK, the US, and even the European Union have banned the import of crude oil or refined products from Russia. The UK has to find a solution on its own before time runs out and technology gets more expensive. When the UK exited the European Union, they also exited Euratom, the European body that regulates nuclear energy. This means that they now have to handle their trade agreements and nuclear safeguards. Most of the skilled workers came from the EU, which means the UK now has to build its workforce from scratch. Given that the nation is going through so much trouble for a single project, is Hinkley worth it? What's the hype around it? Once developed, Hinkley will provide carbon zero electricity to around 6 million homes. With an operational lifetime of 60 years, it's estimated that this plant will remove a staggering 90 million tons of CO2 from the environment. This is an essential part of the UK's net zero policy. For those who don't know, in 2019, the UK committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. This simply means that they will minimize their greenhouse emissions to a minimum and compensate for those that are emitted. To achieve these tall ambitions, 
Hinkley Point C will utilize a team of 22,000 workers in an area 50 times that of Hyde Park. It is built across an impressive 430 acres in Somerset. The plant will use two nuclear reactors that generate electricity by using uranium to create heat. This heat will turn the water into steam that in turn drives the turbines to create electricity. Each reactor is capable of producing approximately 1,650 megawatts of electrical power with a combined output of 3,200 megawatts. That's like 1.6 million electric cars charging at the same time. The twin reactors are third generation, meaning that they are an improved version of the previous nuclear reactors. The reactor is surrounded by two layers of strong, thick concrete and steel, which is 2.6 millimeters thick. This double shell ensures that if anything goes wrong inside, radiation stays inside and doesn't leak into the environment. Let's take a look inside Hinkley and see what the engineers achieved in these seven years. This gigantic circular building will house Hinkley's first reactor. The building is 44 meter high and requires almost 9,000 cubic meters of concrete. The tiny circle you're seeing in the middle is where the actual reactor will be fitted. The reactor will be surrounded by four steam generators that will receive heat from the reactor to generate the steam. Earlier this year, the first steam generator weighing a whopping 520 ton was delivered safely via the Sea to Somerset. From there on, it was taken through the road to the actual site itself. To make sure that the reactor stays in place, a circular steel ring is fitted with millimeter precision. It's called the support ring. To cap this whole building, a 245-ton steel dome was placed to secure the equipment inside. With a diameter of 47 meter, this dome is larger than the dome of St. Paul's Cathedral. Once the dome is in place, the reactor and the steam generators can be slowly lowered into their positions. But wait, how can they bring the reactor in if the roof is already sealed? The simple answer is sideways. The reactor will enter the building through an equipment hatch on rails. From there onwards, it will be carefully lowered in the reactor cavity pool, where it will stay for the next 60 years. This will fit the huge equipment hatch, which will be installed on this opening behind me. It will open and close, allowing equipment to be moved into the reactor building during construction and operation. After immense hard work, the dome was ready to be lifted. Everybody's been working for over five years to get to this point. And we're preparing to lift dome one. So we can finally put the lid on and close this reactor up. The crew had to ensure that the weather was calm so that there was no margin of error in fitting the lid. And to be honest, it was a spectacular sight. Watch it for yourself. Now that the building is sealed, the crew has started fitting all the equipment and cables needed to bring the reactor to life. The reactor was brought on site last year and is now being prepared to be taken to its final destination. Needless to say, Hinkley looks impressive on video, but there are some who aren't much impressed. Starting with the obvious one, Hinkley is extremely over budget in fact, it is more than four times more expensive on a pound for megawatt basis than the average nuclear plant in South Korea. You might object by saying labor is cheaper in South Korea, and you're technically correct. But what about France? It's a country with strong labor laws, and labor isn't exactly cheap there. Flamanville 3 is a French nuclear plant that uses the same reactor type as Hinkley and was built by the same company, EDF. It costs them 25% less than what is going to be the case for the UK. To be fair, Hinkley is Britain's first nuclear power station in 30 years. The nation practically gave up on building new stations. Without the professional expertise of Euratom post-Brexit, there are a lot of things Britain has to sort out on its own. South Korea has kept costs low by developing a series of nuclear plants and having a skilled workforce. However, the Hinkley crew is also perfecting their craft with time. For example, the second reactor's welding is done four times faster than the first one. As mentioned before, Hinkley is being funded by French and Chinese companies. And where there's money, there's trouble. Electricité de France, or simply EDF, is an energy giant that owns 68% of Hinkley. The rest of the 32% is owned by China General Nuclear Power Group, or CGNM. Things began to go south when the Chinese side stopped backing Hinkley's cost overruns. The EDF had to take a massive hit of $14 billion, which translates to 13 billion euros. 
As expected, France isn't happy with this development and wants the UK to shoulder this debt. France's finance minister, Bruno Le Maire, said it would be fair for Britain to share the burden of the extra costs. The good news is that British taxpayers won't have to pay a penny for anything that happens at Hinkley. But the same can't be said for its duplicate project, Sizewell C, which is under construction on the Suffolk coastline. Remember that the whole point of building a nuclear plant is to save the environment for years to come. And yet, a construction as big as this will inevitably disturb the environment. It's like fighting fire with fire. To ensure that the damage is as minimal as possible, the EDF had to take some lengthy and hence costly steps. A typical nuclear reactor requires water to cool down the steam it produces as a result of a fission reaction. This water is usually pumped from the sea, and sometimes fish can get caught in the pumping process. To avoid this situation, EDF will pump seawater at a low velocity so that fish have a chance to swim away. EDF is also compelled by the law to install at least two E8 acoustic fish deterrents. This device emits sound waves that are unpleasant or scary for fish. These sounds keep marine life away from water intake pipes where they can be trapped. But even though it's great in theory, this process only saves a fraction of the fish. EDF is trying to persuade regulators to remove this burdensome requirement and instead create a salt marsh nearby. Opposition to the Hinkley power plants isn't recent. In 1981, when the UK government announced plans to expand its nuclear stations, a group named Stop Hinkley Expansion was founded. They pressured the government into giving up its plans and instead invest in other cheaper renewables. In 2016, almost 300,000 people signed a petition to stop Hinkley's construction. This is part of the dilemma nuclear energy is facing globally. Other renewables like wind and solar are getting cheaper and more popular. By the time Hinkley becomes operational, the technology itself might become obsolete. Then there's the controversy surrounding the design of the plant itself. Some critics questioned whether the plant would work to begin with. This project comes with enormous risks for French and Chinese state-owned companies putting billions of dollars into relatively untested nuclear technologies. And for British consumers committed to paying for decades to come for electricity at prices that may well be well above market levels. EDF had to prove to the Office of Nuclear Regulation that their design would work. To meet the committee's requirements, EDF had to introduce 7,000 design modifications. These changes meant that Hinkley would consume 25% more concrete and 35% more steel than before. For better or worse, the UK has to wait at least a decade to see any fruit of their effort. What do you think about the Hinkley power plant? Will its benefits outweigh the negatives? Or is it a deal that the UK will regret forever? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to SkyBuilds for the latest updates in the construction industry.